Hey guys, welcome back to the classroom. All right, today we're gonna make a couple different things, uh, lumen prints and also phytograms. They're very similar to one another and they're both a great thing to do with expired films and papers. You can use paper and film that's not expired, but it's a really great thing to do with paper and film that has been expired. So before we get into making the lumens and making a phytogram, let me explain all the things that I have out in front of me so you can see what I have. So I've got just a bunch of expired papers here. Um, actually, this is probably not expired. And, uh, the or this Oriental Professional paper is, I think, still good. And so is this Arista ortho, uh, Ortholitho film. But some of these papers I got uh, at an estate sale. This paper um, expired, some of these papers expired in the 1930s. So they are well expired and they are out there not made anymore so if you can find a batch of papers on eBay or sometimes estate sales that's a great place to find expired papers and and also films I've got some orthochromatic film um, and some old ortho litho film uh, from Kodak so just a really wide variety of just old papers and things that I have collected and or been given um, I also have some 4x5 film for the phytograms and uh, I've got a paper safe where I have taken some of this paper out in the dark room. You don't want to expose the whole package uh, if it's not exposed already. And so I took some individual sheets of these out in the dark room and I put them in a paper safe here. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And then we'll get into making a lumen print and then I'll tell you about a phytogram. They're really, really similar, but. Uh, the main difference is that a lumen is on silver gelatin paper and a phytogram is done using film. But there's also a little uh, developer that you can use with the phytogram. So I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so uh, let's make a lumen print. So I've got, it works best with plant material. So go out and find some really cool looking plants. I have no idea what some of these things are. I just found them uh, in a field behind the school here. And so, you know, go out and just look around your house, go for a walk and find some really cool looking leaves, plant, uh, you know, just branches, different plants, flowers, organic material works the best. All right, so I'm gonna get a piece of glass and I'm just gonna grab a sheet of my paper. Now, the paper that's in here has all been exposed, so I don't really mind doing that. And you can tell that this paper has a lot, it actually smells kind of funny, <laughs> it's that old. So it has all kinds of silverization going on here. It's, it, this has been ex expired a long time ago. And I'm just gonna set, let's do this one on here. All right, and then I'm going to put a piece of glass on top. And then I'll take, well, in a minute here, I'll take these outside and uh, expose them and we'll kind of look and see what's going to happen. So you don't see anything happening immediately. The paper basically stays white, but you will start to see it change change color a little bit. It'll turn cream or maybe like a blue color. And then when, when we take it outside in the sunlight, it'll really start changing colors. You'll see that here in the second part. All right, I'm going to set that off to the side. And I'm just going to try a few different of these papers that I that I got out. So let me just grab a couple different things here. Like this one is already starting to turn a little yellow. This is one of the really old papers that I had. And I think I'll put this one on there. I usually go for something kind of simple uh, in terms of composition. You know, you always want to try to compose in a way that's that's pleasing to the eye. Use your, uh, your understanding of composition. And let's just uh, just smash that down. All right, and you know sometimes you might have to kind of reposition things a little bit because as you smash them, they're going to shift a little bit, and that's okay. All right, so I've got that one. We'll set that off to the side, and then let me try um, uh, one of the newer papers. Actually, I'll try that ortholitho film because it's sort of like a paper and a film. It works a lot like silver gelatin, but it is transparent. So the ortholitho film has a, a darker side and a lighter side. You want the lighter side is where the emulsion is. And I'm going to set just set that there. Um, and then I'm going to put this on there. 
Okay, so we'll see we'll see what happens with that. Now I'm going to put some of my films over here. Okay, so those are going to be lumen prints. Those are done on photographic paper. So a phytogram is a very similar thing, but it's done using film. So I have some pieces of film here, some old pieces of film. Oh, they're here. This is just some Ilford Delta. Now I'm getting it out of the box. I know that this whole thing has been exposed already. Now, uh, to prepare for the phytogram, one thing that's a little different is I have prepared a solution that I have some leaves soaking in. This solution is just a liter of water with one tablespoon of citric acid and two tablespoons of washing soda or sodium bicarbonate. And I just mixed those together and I made that this solution and I've had these leaves soaking in here for probably about 20 to 30 minutes or so. And what that's going to do is that that solution acts as a developer. So immediately as I put the leaves on, the, the plants on, on my film, it's going to actually start developing the film. And so that way, um, it, 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 because it's film, it needs that developer to kind of uh, give it a difference when you see the difference between the exposed and unexposed parts. All right, so let me get the, um, the film out. And what's nice about using ortholithofilm or just regular sheet film is that it you will end up with a transparent image and so you can then use that to create a cyanotype or it's a, this is a really great way to make transparencies so with with this film the way I'm determining what side I want to use well one side is more of a lighter gray and also these notches here should be in the bottom right if I'm holding the film horizontally like this, and I and I can touch it with my my right hand thumb. So that's where I, I know that that's the right side. If I was in the dark, loading this film into a sheet film holder, I couldn't see at all. And so that's what those notches are for. So I'm going to set a couple of these out. All right, and then I've got kind of a larger leaf that I want to use that's been soaking. I'm going to kind of drip that off so I don't drip all over the place. If you don't mind dripping all over the place, then you can you can certainly deal with that. You know what? I'm going to change my mind a little bit. I'm going to put this big leaf on the ortholitho. Even though I soaked this in here, it's still going to give me kind of a phytogram feel. All right, and you can already see the chemistry starting to act on the silver there. All right, let me just soak this real quick. Pull it, calling an audible here, doing something a little different. All right, so I'm gonna set this on this film and I'll make kind of a diptych like that. And then I'm gonna do this. I kind of like the spatters a little bit, you know, if I'm told not to do something, I kind of want to. So, let's see how that, what that does. All right, maybe I'll even get some on my fingers and kind of do that, just to see what happens. Okay, another thing that you can do, I also, I have some cyanotype chemistry, and uh, one thing that I found is that I, if I drip this onto the phytogram, it creates some interesting effects. So I'm actually, I didn't mix this first. I'm just going to kind of drop this out one drop at a time. It's not mixed into the workable solution for cyanotype. It's still just separate as the A and B solution, which if you watch my cyanotype chemistry mixing, you'll understand what I'm talking about. These two things are mixed together to make the cyanotype emulsion. And I'm essentially just mixing it together here. something like that and then um, I think I'm going to use this to kind of swish that stuff around and paint a little bit I'm kind of painting now so you definitely could use some some painting skills or ideas or what you know, this thing I love to experiment and just try different things and see what happens if I if I try different things this is kind of making some scratchy marks Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. All right, so let me grab the piece of glass that goes on top of this, and uh, we're going to go outside, 
and I'll set these out and we'll start to see how they're going to start changing color. So let's go outside and we'll do that. All right, see you out there. Okay, so here are the prints put outside and already you can see that the square one has turned in like a bright red color already and uh, the other one with the kind of spiky thing there in the front top the top left there has turned kind of a bluish green and then these other ones are starting to turn all kinds of crazy colors so you can set these outside for hours uh, they will start to turn almost immediately and and really just kind of watch them and then when they get a color that you like is when they're done but you could easily set these out for several hours or I've even heard of people setting them out for days um, and just seeing what happens you know just experimenting with how is the Sun and the UV interacting with the silver in the images so I can kind of get some different views so I'm just gonna leave these out here for a while um, and then we'll come back out and we'll see what's going on with them and I'll show you how to finish up the print I really am liking that red purple color there and this ortho film is getting some really cool purpley blue colors as well one thing I want to point out too is I don't know if you can tell but there's some moisture building up in the glass uh, don't put these out on your grass lawn it will kill the grass underneath basically act like a magnifying glass and it will probably kill the grass so try to find some place like a table um, or concrete something like that that's in full Sun but not on grass that you that you want to stay alive after you're done but that moisture building up in there is going to create some interesting effects as well um, so yeah so we'll just come back out here in a little while and see what's going on with these and I'll show you how to finish them up all right all right I've got my lumens back from outside and I had them sitting out there for about three hours which is honestly a little bit short for a lumen but you know you could like I said you could leave them out for for several hours all day uh, you know or, or several days I've even heard of people putting them up on their dashboard of their car and so as they're driving around doing errands or whatever you know they've got something exposing there so now it's kind of exciting I'm, I'm ready to see what these things look like um, these phytograms I'm going to do something a little different with but these lumen prints and again the difference is that these are done on film phytograms are and they have the uh, uh, washing soda and citric acid developer and the lumen prints are just it's just a plant put down on a piece of exposed photo paper and I like this green blue green gray color here so I'm kind of encouraged by that but let's lift this up and see what's happening all right and so you can see where the plant left an image and that's it now you've got an image um, so in order to keep that what you would want to do is rephotograph it or you could scan it that's what a lot of artists that make lumen prints they'll just scan them because as you'll see in a second when we put it in the fixative it's going to change the color but I want I want you to see what it looks like before and if that's what you like scan it and your your permanent record of the image will be the scan or the digital photograph all right that's what that one looks like and I'm kind of excited to see what this one did I like these brown and red colors that I've got going on here it smells uh, the the plant because it's you know kind of rotted and it's gotten all wet and it's got an odor to it okay so ooh, that's pretty cool okay so that has some really beautiful and you can see some of the moisture that'll that'll dry and that's got some really nice reds and oranges in there nice contrast with the purples and blues here I think that's just gorgeous um, and it really has pretty good detail you know I've got some of the veins so I left it out there I think you know a good amount of time um, again it's gonna depend on the leaf and some all the different variables make a difference the humidity it's pretty humid outside today all right so that's pretty awesome I really like how that looks all right before we get to the phytograms I want to show you what these things are gonna look like if they're fixed and I love the way they look like unfixed so I'm a little um, not nervous but I hope that they don't it, it's just gonna it's just gonna tone down the color Ooh, I just noticed that there's some weird silvery patina going on with the paper I love that kind of stuff all right so this fixer is the same fixative that you would use to develop or to fix 
uh, photographic paper in the darkroom. We're going to skip the developer. We don't need any developer. If I put these in developer right now, they'd just turn black because the developer would, would react with the exposed silver and just turn the whole thing black. So we don't want that. So we're just going to go straight into fixer. So I've got fixer already pre-made, and this is a rapid fix. It's a little bit different than the sodium thiosulfate that you might have in your kit, or if you just have straight sodium thiosulfate fixer for other processes. Uh, that will work as well, but it might take twice as long to fix, whereas this is going to take about five minutes or maybe even just a couple few minutes. You might let it sit in sodium thiosulfate for a good 10 or 15 minutes, if not longer. Okay, so let's see what happens when I put these in there. All right, it didn't change drastically. Uh, a little bit less bright blue, I would say, but not terrible. I actually still really like that color. It's kind of a periwinkle blue, so that's kind of cool. This is always a surprise. One of the reasons I really love these processes because especially with these old papers, I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, and so it's, it's always kind of a nice surprise just to see, to see what happens. All right. Let's put this other one in there. Notice that I'm kind of tilting the tray and I'm trying to get the paper in there evenly so that I can get it coated kind of evenly. So I'll tilt it forward, slide the paper in, and then drop the tray so to kind of wash it over, wash the fixer over. All right, let's see what happened with that. Wow. I actually kind of like that a little better. I think you can see more of the oranges and reds and there's this really cool halo thing going on around there. Now the red that was in the leaves has now turned more of a yellowy brown, but that's fine. That's pretty cool actually, I, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna set these off to the side. Those would, would be there for about uh, five minutes and then you just rinse them with water and they are permanent. Now the, because they've been fixed, they will stay that way. If you don't fix it, then it will just continue to change colors and eventually the whole thing would just turn like a, a you know a yellow or, or whatever color it, it was or you know whatever color that paper turns it would ruin your image so if you fix it though it's it's permanent all right so I'm gonna set those off to the side and then we're gonna go over to the sink actually to work on these uh, phytograms but let's go ahead and take the glass off here and just see what we've got all right so this was the ortho litho film and when I lift this leaf up, mm -hmm, okay. Not super impressed yet, but wait, let's wait and see what we get. All right, and then these had cyanotype on them, if you remember. So again, not super impressive to look at just now, but let's see what happens after we rinse them and fix them. All right, let's go over to the sink. I'll meet you over there. Okay, so we're back at my disgusting sink here. I apologize for that. It's had a lot of a lot of use over the years. And I'm going to try to do this one with one hand, so forgive my clumsiness. Um, all right, I'm going to wash the, the ortho lumen first. Um, the ortho lumen has a backing on it that is going to wash off. So that's why we want to make sure that we wash that. And I'm just going to use cold water. And I'm just rinsing this back and forth. And you can kind of see that green stuff that's coming off that's the backing and we want to make sure that that stuff gets off that is not anything that's gonna hurt anybody don't drink it but you know if you get a little on your fingers or whatever you're gonna be just fine all right i'm gonna turn this over and make sure that i get all of that stuff off the back there and I'm notice that I'm uh, I'm washing pretty aggressively. You know, don't just put a little in there and and kind of do that. You know, gently. That's not going to cut it. You really need to wash this around and get all of that stuff off of there. And basically, you're just doing this until the water runs clear. I can still see kind of pinks and purples in there. Now it's starting to get a little clearer, and we can actually start to see the image a little bit better it's got some detail in it you can see where the it, where the leaf was pressed a little flatter Let's flip that over again and this is the emulsion side okay 
And I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Still getting a little pink out of there. I'm just gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna throw it in the fixer here in a second. All right, so let's throw this off to the side. Flip it off a little bit. All right, and let's get our film. Now this had cyanotype emulsion on it, so that's why I'm rinsing here. Sorry for the herky-jerkiness of my recording. Okay, and I'm just gonna rinse this. And you can see the blue cyanotype chemistry coming off. And again, I'm just gonna rinse until the water is running clear. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put the phone down. I'm not gonna make you watch me do this entire thing. Um, I'm gonna wash till the water runs clear and then I'll meet you over at the fixer and we'll see what happens with the when these go in the fixer, okay? All right, now I've got these pretty well rinsed, but before I put it in the fixer, I wanna do one more thing actually. Still getting a little bit of purple, but that's okay. I'm gonna fill this, tr this tray with just enough water that I could use to cover the print. And I'm gonna put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there. Turn the water off there. Just a little bit of just regular hydrogen peroxide. Just a little drop is all you need. And when I rinse that around, it's gonna interact with the cyanotype and it's gonna dark, make that more of a dark blue. So instead of a light, kind of washed out blue, now that's a much darker blue. All right, I'm back at my workstation here and I've got my fixer off to the side. So I'm just going to pour that into my tray here. And I've got nice photography trays. You can use anything that'll hold liquid, a Pyrex container or um, aluminum turkey baster pan, whatever you can find. You, you could easily wash that off and it would be just fine. Okay, so when I put these in there, they're gonna start getting a little more transparent. So the ortho film and this, and this uh, sheet film, this is uh, Ilford sheet film, is gonna get transparent. And so we can use that to make prints. And you can see this purple residue. What that is, is um, a, a layer on the film that is called an anti-halation layer. You can already see on the ortholitho image, you can see right through it. So that's being fixed. All right, and again, that would be permanent. So now that this is a transparency, You know, I can use that to make any other kind of contact print, like a cyanotype or, or whatever I want to do. All right, so that's that's usable for something else now. All right, and same thing with the with the film. It's going to take a little longer to fix because film just does, but it will eventually get transparent as well. All right, that's it. Uh, so we've got the lumen prints and the phytograms, and that should. I think be you know years and years of fun. You can do lots of different experimentation with different kinds of papers, different kinds of plants, different exposure times. You can spray different chemicals on there. Try spraying cyanotype on there, for example. Um, you know, just just play around and see what you can come up with. All right, guys, thanks a lot.